this video we're going to talk about how we can manipulate images from light to dark and make them also wintry because hey Christmas is upon us. Um, so what I've got here is a photograph of um, one of my um, friends um, farms where they've um, just put a tea room up and they've got um, a lot of uh, Christmas lights up but as you can see when I took the photograph it was still broad daylight now what I want to do is I want to make this look very very Christmassy now for this I've got a couple of challenges I've got first of all it's broad daylight um, and it's not really accentuating the Christmas lights and second of all it's not very Christmassy in regards snow. So what I want to do is I want to change this image from what we've got in front of us to something more like that. Now it's not the best piece of work. Remember the whole purpose of these videos is to discuss the techniques to get there. So what we're going to talk about is specifically how we can make it um, look like there's lights glowing coming from the actual um, building itself, accentuating the actual Christmas lights and also this snow effect. So how is this all done? Well we first of all start off with our base image and what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, duplicate the layer uh, sorry, first of all, layer from background, and we'll just call it uh, base. We won't really use this apart from reference. Now, what we'll also do at this point is we're going to duplicate the layer um, again, and in this case, we're going to call it. Um, um, this is going to be called glow um, because what we're going to do on this one is we're going to make it look a very funny looking color and we're going to ooze the lights, tickle the lights through it. We also need to duplicate the layer once again. Um, the reason being is because we need to make it look dark so I'm going to make another layer called dark. Now it's all pretty much straightforward techniques that you do on here. Um, so to start off with, let's let's do the easiest one, which is going to be glow. So I'm just going to hide the other layer. So at the moment nothing looks different. And then over here in our um, adjustments panel, we'll have the photo filter option. So I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to change the filter to either a deep emerald or a deep yellow. Um, and really ramp up the density because I'm not too concerned about the way it looks because I'm only going to be picking out specific points of that image um, for us to use. So um, yellow or do we go for emerald? Well emerald is sort of washed out. You also have a, a normal yellow as well but I think that looks a little bit too yucky so I'm going to go for a deep yellow um, and in all intents purposes that is the end of that particular um, layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just in effect going to just select them by using the shift key and click on both layers and right click and merge the layers together and it renames it to photo filter one so I'm just going to change it a little bit and just say photo filter glow and then there we are. Now we need to do the same sort of thing with the dark layer so I'm just going to make sure I've got that layer selected. Now in adjustments there's all sorts of different ways you may want to do this. You may want to fiddle around with your brightness um, to lower it down but what I found first of all is I really need to wash out the colors because I'm not too concerned about the look of the wood because it's going to be at night. I want the glow of the light bulbs to stand out instead so I'm going to bin the adjustment um, of um, brightness and contrast and instead I'm going to go to vibrance first of all. Now I, I want the vibrance but I don't really want the saturation so I'm going to make it look a little bit more washed out so it sort of stands out like that. That'll do. Um, but not the end of the story here because I need to do something else. I need to add another layer of exposure. So on here we just have a look around and sure enough there's our exposure one. And inside here I'm just going to drag the exposure. I'm not going to touch the others at all. I'm just going to lower it down. So as you can see now because of the vibrance that I've got on there it's sort of standing out the, um, the light still. But as you can clearly see I'm making it a much darker image. Now, I don't want to go too mad with it because at the end of the day I'm going to replace the sky anyway. So there we go, that'll do. Um, so I've now got, say, two transformations on top of the layer. So I'm going to just select all three and merge them all together so it just becomes one image. And that will be exposure, sure, but this time, oops, exposure, just rename this. 
Now, what I need to do really is switch the layers around. So I'm going to drag and drop the dark and just put it underneath glow. Now, what we need to do on the glow one, if we turn it on, is at the moment we're seeing everything. I don't want to see anything. So what I want to do is making sure I've got that layer selected is I need to make a layer mask. So down at the bottom, we have the add layer mask icon. And then make sure you have clicked onto the layer mask. And then with a brush, um, you can do a fill option if you wanted to, but I just tend to use a brush. Um, you need to um, hit X probably because in particular we need the foreground to be black. And then just drag with your mouse and to the point that everything is covered over. Now, what we want to do now is just start zooming in on that layer, making sure you've got the layer mask selected. And then by using um, X again on your keyboard, and then adjusting the size of your brush by using the um, square brackets I use, or you can do it from the brush selection tool at the top here. Um, what you need to do is you need to start clicking and lo and behold, you should start seeing bits of glow come through. Now, I'm also having a wide brush because remember, I want the wood behind it to also seep through. Now, also what I would recommend is make sure you don't use hardness of 100%. You're better off using something about 50 and even less in a moment. So I'm just going to stick it around 50 at this point and then just carry on doing this. So in some cases you may have to drag over it multiple times, but you should start to see some of the advantages and benefits of doing this. So let's just zoom out and see what we've got. And all being well, as you can see, I'm now starting to see things come to life. So you then want to go through all of your little um, light bulbs and doing the same thing. So bit by bit, you start accentuating the image by um, unmasking certain areas. Now the key to making it look all snugly and Christmassy is when it comes to the windows and what I would recommend is you adjust the hardness down to pretty much zero, choose quite a chunky brush, um, probably not that chunky, I'll just um, size it down slightly and then just making sure you've got more or less the corner of the window inside the circle I would click once with the mouse and then hold the shift key down and then go down roughly doing the same at the bottom and click again and then you should get a reasonably nice glow coming from the actual um, si um, side of the window now, annoyingly, it f didn't do my um, softness control, so I'm just doing Control alt z um, just to go back a few steps, and I'll just make sure hardness is set on zero, and I'll just do it again, because this should now look a lot more homely. That's better. So, with the shift key still held down, I'm just going around the entire window, and then, without the shift key, just fill in the gaps, and then ditto down here. Now, I won't bore you with every single window you want to fill in so that'll do for me um, and I'll continue the video once I've got all the um, all the lights right and there you have it I've now got it all sort of glowing so it's starting to look a little bit more wintry and Christmas feel um, but there's more to it um, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the um, the, the actual um, clouds and I want to actually uh, supplant it with um, this this moon now um, I've added this moon in just by inserting um, into a new layer now the problem is with this moon is it's not strictly the same sort of dimensions well no problem uh, one of the things that we've not talked about on any other video is the um, content aware scaling tool which basically just gets rid of the nothingness but allows you to drag and adjust the image so if I get it to there and let go and let it rework itself out it should keep the moon still in its um, correct place which is ideal that's what I want so I'll just press enter on that so all it does is it gets rid of the nothingness that the computer knows it won't make any difference so what that's done is it's kept the spherical um, orbs the same but it's got rid of all the rubbish in between that is 
which is nothing which the eye won't notice. So that's great. I've now got it in um, a, a good way. Um, now the thing is we need to cut away what we don't want. Now this is done in another video um, for about 12 minutes and I'd recommend you have a look at that which is all about the um, the um, the mask. Um, so in this case I'm going to spin through it so I apologize if you've not seen this before. So using the quick selection tool um, on the base layer with everything else turned off I'm just going to drag and highlight very quickly so I create my mask just make sure I get everything else selected that I want um, I need to include the path there we go I need to make sure everything else is in place so it's nothing to do really with the actual base image but it's the most clear-cut one to actually get the mask done through the quick selection tool um, so I'll adjust the size of the brush and then that'll do for the demonstration but uh, well, let's just get that bit in as well so there we go um, but the um, mask is the wrong way around so we will go to the select menu and choose inverse um, at which point I now go on to the moon layer with it selected and now click on my add layer mask because it will be based off a selection now which will now cut away the other bit so it now looks very artificial at this point so I'm going to turn off the base put the other two back on again and it's now starting to look a lot more festive a lot more Christmassy now the only thing is that it does look completely artificial I will grant you so there's got to be things that you can do to trick the eye now specifically one of the most fantastic easiest options you can do is add snowflakes so how's this done well on here we need to actually create a new layer and in this layer just immediately no layer mask whatsoever just make sure you choose your brush get a whopping great big brush on there make sure you're in black and just make a completely black frame I'm gonna just put the hardness on 100% here because I don't want it to go anywhere else so I'll just make that all go black right and so with that done dead easy now what we do is we go into the uh, filter menu and we choose distort uh, sorry noise apologies and add noise and when I mean noise I mean lots of noise uh, let's say about 140 150 percent I mean lots the key thing is it's got to be on Gaussian and monochromatic because otherwise you'll get all lots of color and that's rubbish you need it on mono chromatic and Gaussian so let's just OK on that so we've now got that but that's not snow we need to tidy it up a little bit well the next thing we need to actually do is we need to blur it a bit so in the blur just do blur or blur more blur more is probably the most excessive that looks okay but still way too fuzzy well what we do now is in the image and adjustments we choose levels now what this does is it just gives you your histogram of the colors now it's lots of peaks and troughs now we only want the high end so all we do down here is we just drag this little triangle if it wants to move up move that one down a little bit and lo and behold we now get more like a starscape which is fantastic so we'll okay that now the only thing is it still doesn't look fully like snow because we also need to really put it in a bit of a motion blur so um, I'm gonna go into the um, blur options motion blur I'm gonna make sure that we put it at a rather jaunty angle like a snow coming down um, increase the distance and so forth that's probably too much um, make sure it looks more like what snow would look like okay that and then the final trick is at the moment black is um, doing nothing so we'll tell it that we want to send that to the screen so all in terms of purposes you now get snow covering your vista fantastic it's now looking quite wintry now you may want to actually treat uh, trick it a bit more you may want to duplicate the layer um, and the reason you do this is because it it brings it out first of all makes it a lot more stronger but you may ultimately want to with the layer rotate it to say uh, 180 degrees and so you get cross hatching of snow so it goes all over the place but there we go in a nutshell how you can actually make quite a wintry scene hope you've enjoyed some of the uh, techniques involved here thanks for watching